through chat uh, and after uh, you after a few minutes i will give the solution to the problem okay today we will be doing algebra mostly related to identities and stuff and uh, writing equations and then solving equations okay first of all before uh, doing anything in algebra at the, at the level we are studying right now uh, i hope everyone is able to hear me okay. yeah at the level that we are uh, at every one of you must be aware and should have memorized if not memorize just uh, be aware of these uh, identities they are as follows first one is a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square second is a minus b i i'll just write uh, down uh, them uh, write them down and then you guys can uh, fill in the blanks sort of a plus b a minus b then x minus a x minus b okay then we have a plus b the whole cube six we have a minus b the whole cube most of these identities are redundant in the sense that you can replace b with minus b and then you get the other identity correct and then you have uh, a plus b times uh a square or, or i'll write it this way a cube minus so i'll write the factorized state over here a plus b a square plus a b sorry minus a b plus b square and then eighth identity a minus b a square plus a b plus b square and then Ninth will be a plus b plus c the whole square, and finally your tenth identity. Uh, a cube plus b, a plus b plus c times of a square plus b square plus c square minus a b minus b c minus c a equal to. I just write down all of them. This will be same as uh, about. Uh, you can replace uh, a square uh, minus two ab plus b square. This will be a square minus b square. This is x square minus x a plus b plus ab. This is a cube plus b cube plus three ab a plus b. Hello. Okay, that is another expanded form of this also. This is equal to a cube minus b. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I cannot hear anything. Is my voice not audible? Hello. Is is my voice audible? Yes. 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 For us. Yeah. Fine. Uh, okay. Uh. Yeah, a cube minus b cube uh, plus 3ab a minus b. Again, notice these are the equations that uh, are proofs for uh, 7 and 8. Okay. This is a square plus b square plus c square plus 2ab plus 2bc plus 2ca and finally we have a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3abc okay on the lhs i've written the factorized state and on the rhs i've written the simplified state these are very important uh, uh part of most uh, textbooks and uh, most math textbooks at uh, grade 8 level yeah. uh, and also very uh, necessary for problem solving. Okay. Keeping all of this in mind and if uh, note this down in your notebook and keep referring to this whenever needed. We'll do some problems. We'll start out with some things that are not, that don't require the identity as such. Okay. Find x plus y plus z. If x, y equal to 6, y, z equal to 15. 
So zx equal to 10. So this this uh, particular equation uh, or problem doesn't require identities as such, but uh, we'll circle back to identities in, in a few minutes. Try out this question. Using all those 10 identities listed above, right? No, 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 no. This question is not uh, will not be solved using the identities. Uh, that just I gave as a... Uh, what do you call uh, intro to algebra? So you must be aware of those identities, but uh, those identities are not useful in this question particularly. Okay, thank you. So where do I give the answer? Uh, yeah, you can share it on the chat. Pure, pure, uh, yeah, Gina, Ryansh, correct answer. Okay, uh, how, how to go about solving this problem? We need to uh, see that we have, we have symmetry in this uh, problem, right? By symmetry, what I mean is you replace X with Y, Y with Z, Z with X. You are, uh, you again get back the same kind of equations. Yeah, think think about how to solve it. I'll I'll solve the question in a minute. Oh, it's x five. Uh, wait, wait a second. No, x can't be fine. No? Think about it. You put the 5. Uh, uh, yeah, because like a 6 minus 5 is 1. 5 divided. Then wait, how is In this... the end, you'll get, you'll get 5 equal to 1. No? 5 equal to 1 is not possible. Each, each one of these brackets will uh, expand and give you uh, 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 5, right? <laughs> then in the end, you have 6 minus uh, 5, which is 1. So you are left with 5. So, 5 is not equal to 1. Okay, the answer is 1. Sorry, uh, 6 is equal to 1. X Sorry, X is equal to 1. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, uh, uh, if you want to do any, uh, if you want to say uh, what your answer is, put it in the chat. Otherwise, we we'll lose time. Okay. Okay, solution to this is uh, not to go about uh, solving uh, from bottom up. You try try solving this top down. Uh, what I mean by that is you have one over here. Expand one as phi upon something. Okay, so you can write one as phi upon phi, and you can write two upon six minus one. So notice, uh, what we have done is we have gotten what our blue bracket was. Are you able to see what has happened? We have written our original one, our original one over here, and this is green bracket. This green bracket has a blue bracket inside this. Now, so so our blue bracket is now one, and then inside that there is a red bracket. If you keep doing this, you will end up with x equal to one only. Okay, well, this is wow. two two more steps, two more steps after this. Okay, I'll I'll write it down. Let's see. Okay, so you could, uh, first of all, everyone just notice there is a green bracket outside. Our one is that green bracket. I expanded uh, one as phi upon something and then phi upon six minus something. That something came out to be one because I'm expanding one in, into that, uh, in, into the manner in which the LHS is. Now I'm saying that our one is our, L, uh, what do you call, blue bracket. So I can write one 
is equal to our blue bracket, which is pi upon 6 minus pi upon 6 minus 6. I mean, there is a red bracket in here. Again, you expand 1 in the similar fashion. So, Again, uh, expand 1 in the similar fashion. This is equal to pi upon 6 minus 1. And notice that this red bracket is the same thing here. You do this for one more time. What you find is x equal to 1. Okay. You uh, Again, now cross check. x equal to 1, 6 minus 1, 5. 5, 5 will become 1 again. So every time this 5, 1, 5, 1 flip is happening. So again, your choice of assumption that x is 5 will also be stable. And keep giving 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1. Sorry, uh, through uh, the, I meant uh, to say 1. Actions. I just got confused with this thing. Huh. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Now. 5 and 1 will oscillate. And uh, see, if the question said that equal to 5, then putting 5 will have given the answer. If the, because now the question said equal to 1, you got it. Uh, you got 1 that way. Fine. So actually, the question should be 1 and 5. Um, no, no, no. This won't have two solutions. No, okay. sir, this will have uh, so e infinite sum, sir. Ah, infinite sum. Okay. Yeah. But I've said that I have answered one way. If I had written something like this, this is the same as writing the infinite sum. This will become a quadratic equation. And then uh, over here, you'll get two solutions. Okay. Infinite sums are uh, in your ballpark only, but uh, we are not dealing with infinite sums right now. Okay. So you have this equation. One second. Number of solutions. Okay. X belongs to real. Real. Uh, so if this is confusing for you, these are all the numbers that you're aware of. If you don't know what this means, this uh, X, X can be any number that you're aware of. If you know what this means, then x is real. Some quadratic to the power a uh, linear equation, right? Solutions are when the values of x that satisfy this. Yeah, correct. Answer is 4. You get 4 somehow. Those who are unable to proceed with this, take a hint. This equation is of the form a to the power b equal to 1. Right conditions. Where this is So in a way, you are making identities of your own. Correct. Uh, Rayan. Well, I think this is a previous NMTC question, right? Yeah. But the so, level of AMC and NMTC are same. So, what is the like? Uh, which level NMTC question? Probably sub junior. Sub juniors. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, so a to the power b, this has uh, multiple conditions where this can be true. We can have either 0, not 0, sorry, 1 to the power b equal to 1, correct? So a equals so 1 or minus 1 case? and b equals 0. Yeah, one second, don't interrupt me while I'm speaking. I, I know you guys know the answer, okay? Uh, so this has a equal to 1, this is our condition 1. Okay. And we don't really uh, care about what B will do. 
another so, uh, condition will be yeah what happened won't this all equal to one because like if it come so like can you scroll up yeah so uh uh in the exponent it says x plus one so this all it's you can see it's equal to one so if you multiply it with anything if you like if you add like in the brackets if you add it to anything it will still and multiply it with something it'll still come to one so like if you add all of this this should equal to um what do you call it yeah like the total is uh fine okay just just make make whatever arguments you have concrete in your mind so that we don't i am open to discussion but uh, uh, just as long as we are not wasting the class time okay uh this can be a to the power 0 is equal to 1 but a must be equal to uh, a must be greater than 0 this is our condition as long as a is greater than 0 we have a positive number not not greater than 0 actually not equal to 0 this is the only condition this is our second condition that <clears throat> We have b equal to 0 and a not equal to 0. This is our second condition. We can also have minus 1 to the power uh, e1. In this case, we have a equal to minus 1, comma b equal to e1 number. Doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It should be an even integer. Okay. These two are the most obvious cases. Uh, these two are most obvious cases. This is the most trickiest one. Sometimes people forget. Uh, and that is where this question becomes, uh, uh, becomes slightly tougher than an easy question. Okay. So we'll go case by case. Case one says that a equal to one. So I have x square minus three x uh, plus one equal to one. So this becomes x square minus three x equal to zero. X equal to zero comma three. Now, we, it doesn't really matter what B is, so we'll leave these two solutions. And then second case is, I have a B equal to 0, which means X plus 1 equal to 0. This implies X equal to minus 1. Now, we need to check if X equal to minus 1, when we put it inside, X square minus 3X plus 1, what do we get? Is this 0? Now, obviously, we know it won't because... Uh, no, we don't know obviously if it won't be or it will be equal to zero. This will be how much? This will be minus one square minus three times minus one plus one. So one plus three plus one equal to five. So this is not equal to zero. So as long as our a is not equal to zero, we don't have a zero to the power zero form. Right? Zero to the power zero form is undefined. It is in a limit equal to one, but in algebra we treat it as undefined. In in other uh, areas of math, sometimes we can work around 0 to the power 0. But in algebra, we'll consider it undefined. Uh, and our third case, so this is, uh, these are two solutions here, one solution here. Third case is what? These arrows indicate um, it's equal to that, like the next part, right? So the, the this one, this arrow is implies. This arrow, I'm just using very uh, frivolously. Uh, it, it doesn't really mean anything. I'm just saying that put, put this value inside there. Okay, this has mathematical meaning this uh, arrow implies uh, the single arrow uh, usually has no meaning x square minus 3x plus 1 equal to minus 1 in this case we have x square minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0 so x minus 1 x minus 2 it's a very simple equation to factorize now notice x equal to 1 comma 2 are our solutions but we need to uh, check what b is for the corresponding values of b, we'll have x plus 1. So 2 comma 3. Right. 2 is even. 3 is not even. So what this, this condition uh, turns out being is minus 1 to the power 3, which is equal to 1, is a false statement. Correct. So this solution we need to draw. The solution that we'll accept is this. So we have one more solution over here. So total 4. Okay. Now, the ways you can do error over here is forget about this thing or forget this entire third case in itself, in its entirety, right? So, you can get either answer 3, which both will be wrong. Okay. Just copy this if you want. 
आंसर विल बी फोर क्वेश्चन फोर एक्स नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो एक्स बाई टू इक्वल टू वाई स्क्वायर एक्स बाई फोर इक्वल टू फोर वाई फाइंड एक्स कॉमा वाई क्वेश्चन अक्षता मिडिल सिंपल सब्सिट्यूशन यू कैन सी दट दिस एक्स इक्वल टू टू वाई स्क्वायर एंड एक्स इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन वाई सो बोथ आर इक्वल टू इच अदर सो यू टू वाई स्क्वायर इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन वाई दिस मीन्स वाई इक्वल टू एट एंड फ्रॉम हियर यू जस्ट पुट दिस इन टू दिस इक्वेशन एक्स इज इक्वल टू 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 द पार सेवन विच इज वन ट्वेंटी एट This I I just kept so that uh, everyone, mm, like uh, at least a few people are able to solve most uh, more number of people are able to solve this. The easy question, which is a pillar question. Now let's start with the identities application. Okay, your thousand square divided by two fifty two square minus two forty eight square. Apply the knowledge of identities over here and find the answer of this first. Five yeah, send it on the chat. If you are unable to, only then try uh, using the mic. Your answer is correct, Mr. Okay, sir. Okay, so hint is. A square minus B square equal to question mark. Yeah, everyone is getting the correct answer, which is five hundred. Hey, ah, uh, what is our A over here? What is B over here? Two fifty two. We can consider A. And then two forty eight will consider equal to B. We have a square minus b square is equal to a plus b, a minus b. Now it's not a coincidence that two fifty two plus two forty eight is five uh, hundred. The examiner actually made this question in this manner only, so that our a plus b becomes so we have square upon. Two fifty two plus two forty eight multiplied by two four fifty two minus forty eight. Okay, this will be thousand square by five hundred times four. This you can write as two times two, and then remove one thousand. You are left with five hundred. Okay, very direct application of uh, inequality. Not inequality, sorry, identity. Let's do a slightly tougher question. Again, no, not requiring identity, but knowledge of uh, indices. So this this is not a gen, uh, what we call identity. This is a, a given e equation, and b equal to nine a. This exponentiation is not uh, commutative, so this is not this will not hold ever always. You need what you need to do is find. A to the power four.
So if you want hint, do substitution. Substitute b equal to nine n into this equation, and then uh, so steps are very logical. Okay. Yes. Uh, so you substitute b over here. What you get? A to the power nine a is equal to nine a to the power a. Is it, can everyone agree? Then what is root? Because law of indices allows us to do this, right? What we are left with is a to the power nine upon a is equal to nine a to the power a upon a. These a's will cancel. What I can directly do otherwise also is like cancel these uh, a's from here and here. What I'll, in, in the end, what I'll be left with is a to the power 9 is equal to 9 times a. Again, I can cancel 1a from both sides and I'll be left with a to the power 8 is equal to 9. Taking a root over here gives a to the power 4 is equal to 3. No, answer will be 3 only, not plus minus 3, because uh, again, we are dealing with real numbers only. No? We can't have a fourth power of a, a number being negative. So, this is the only answer. So, the power 8 is meeting square root, it won't come negative. Sir, we can also solve this by taking log. Yeah, the log method is also something you can do, but in effect, it's the same thing. Whatever I'm doing in the exponent, you'll be doing uh, on on the like normal uh, e e e when you are equating. Correct, now, Because yes. uh, once you write log, that a a that obviously cancel because of they are multiples now, right? Yes. But uh, yeah, uh, introducing log is another uh, chapter in itself. So you have 100 to the power 100 divided by 50 to the power 50 is equal to x to the power 50. Find x. Correct. But send it on the chat now. So that... Sir, I cannot find how, whom to send. Uh, you will get an ID called Samir. Uh... Okay, sir. Yes, sir. I found or, or just uh, tap on host na? or co host. Okay, sir. I found out. Yeah. Co host, basically. 597800 comes up. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. 100 to the power 100 upon 50 to the power 50. You can split the top 100 as 100 to the power 50 multiplied by 100 to the power 50. And in the denominator, we'll still have 50 to the power 50. Now I can take 150 common for 150. So I'll have 100 upon 50. Power 50 multiplied by 100 to the power 50. This will be then 2 to the power 50 multiplied by 100 to the power 50. This is 200 
to the power 50. Now again, you can use multiple different methods uh, to get to the same answer. But uh, this is just to check that if your uh, law of uh, indices is all uh, perfectly clear in your head. There should have been no problem solving this if all of those are clear. Let's do another question. So this is a repeated edition. I didn't, edition. I didn't got yeah. the question. Like, uh, what is it? So here, uh, there is repeated edition n times equal to 64. Now, uh, you need to find what this repeated edition in the uh, question. This is n to the power 4 times it has been uh, repeatedly added. There is some variable n whose square when added n times gives 64. Okay, that means the base of the exponent is same as the number of times we uh, I'm, I'm not sure. This is just some, some has been added repeatedly n times. Okay, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, correct. The base of that exponent is uh, uh, related to the number of times you are adding. Yeah, there, there is no identities or anything that you need to use over here. Car locked uh, I, I hope everyone is getting the answer. So this is repeated addition is multiplication. So n times n square is given 64. So from here you can write n is equal, n cube is equal to 64. And this way you have n equal to 4. Right. Then uh, what you need to find is n to the power 4 times n. Because n is being added to itself n to the power 4 times. This is n to the power 5. <clears throat> and that will be 4 to the power 5. Which is 2 to the power 10. And this is 1024. Sir, can you see my chat? What I have said? Yeah, I can, but the thing is, I'm getting too many uh, chats, okay. so it's like a waterfall, it's going away. Okay, do this question n equal to 400 m equal to 300 n times 1 plus 1 by n multiplied by 1 plus 1 by n plus 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 by n plus 2 and so on until you reach 1 plus 1 by n plus m.
what is this this is a finite uh, product that you have to do n and m are given um, 400 and 300 Yeah, correct. The answer correct. Answer correct. I think. Sorbo correct. Just as a hint, uh, make like fractions of each of the terms and notice what's happening. Yeah, she correct. Okay, what do we see over here? We have n multiplied by 1 plus 1 upon n. If we take the uh, like fraction of this term, what we will get is n plus 1 upon n. Correct. This next term will become n plus 1 upon n. This next term will become n plus 1 plus 1 upon n plus 1. Guys, mute the yourself. Question, I don't understand. Hmm. If you can notice this, the next term will be n plus 3 upon n plus 2. Because uh, the denominator will have n plus 2 in, in it uh, from before. And this will keep going on until our last term, which will be n plus m plus 1 upon n plus m. Now notice what is happening over here. N and N will cancel. They, even though they are in two different terms, associative property allows us to do this. Then N plus 1 cancel with N plus 1. This, this will keep going on until we cancel all the terms in this manner. There will be a term that is coming over here that will cancel with N plus M. Because the penultimate term will be what? N plus M upon N plus M minus 1. So this is what we call a uh, uh, eliscopic uh, production. Or like taking a product, uh, using uh, reducing the tel uh, product using telescopic method. So what we're left with in the end is this n plus m plus one, right? And there is a uh, just to be more precise, there is a one in uh, below n. So never forget if the, if there was something below n over here, that would also end up in our uh, product in the end. So what we're left with is n plus m plus 1. And we have been given n equal to 400, m equal to 300. So this is 701. Now you are never expected to actually put in the values of n and m and solve it. Right. So certain times the question can get solved by uh, doing some... Uh, get, getting a neat expression uh, beforehand before putting the values. So algebra is mostly that. Uh, you are never expected to put the values. You, you are expected to make a very uh, neat looking uh, equation in which once you put the values, the answer will come instantly. Okay. Sir? That's the question 10. Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt. Like, um, how do, uh, do we get like n into n plus 1 by n into like uh, on telescopic summation? Right. This is not, there is not a summation over here. This is, uh, we are taking a product now. Telescopic summation is another concept where you uh, have a sum. But here we have a product. So we see the, the like there, if you're aware of telescopic summation, uh, telescopic summation, you have common terms. And in that common term, the we have a partial fraction and then uh, one term will cancel with other. Those who are not aware of telescopic summation, fine, we'll do some questions later on. 
But here, what is happening? The numerator of the first term is cancelling with the denominator of the next term. So that way, uh, we are reducing our entire uh, equation to a, uh, to a very to a single term. This is a multi-term uh, product, and we are left with a single term. Fine. Uh, let's do the next question. Find a square plus b square plus c square upon b square minus c. Now here use any identity that you like. Can you please show the identity list? Um, this will take away from the class team. No? Can it, won't this, can't this answer be like almost anything? No. Nah. No, if you are thinking it would be zero by zero form, it won't be. No. Uh, assume that a comma, uh, I mean like, it's given a plus b plus c equal to zero, not all. Not all a comma b comma c equal to zero. Okay. So what I'm saying is like say like I'm just giving an example. This is completely inaccurate. So like a could be seven, b could be ten, like that. Ah, a could be seven, b could be ten. Fine. C will have to be minus seventeen. It could be, and then that. Yeah. What I'm saying is that uh, like the answer won't be same for all. Answer will come, sir. So there is a proportionality between the numerator and denominator. That's why I've given the question. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given. If you take a hint, I will give a hint to it. Use B equal to minus A minus C. Use this substitution. You will find that your answer reduces in an instant. Yeah, few of you are able to get the answer. Answer is two. Okay, how did I get the answer? B equal to minus a minus c is after this is just simple uh, work. Nothing you have to think about beyond this. B equal to minus a minus c. So you have b square is equal to minus a minus c the whole square. Now there is a negative sign inside a square that is uh, immaterial. So this is the same as a plus see the whole square and that is uh, a square plus 2ac plus c square and then when you put this in uh, back into our uh, the, the the fraction that we need to find there will be a square plus a square plus 2ac plus c square plus c square because there was already one c square over there divided by in the denominator we'll have a square plus 2ac plus c square minus ac this a and a will become 2a. This c and c will become 2c. And in the denominator, we'll have one cancellation. Okay, One ac will cancel with another ac. And we are left with twice of a square plus ac plus c square divided by a square plus ac plus c square. These will cancel out. And we are left with now, why is it important to say that not all a, b, uh, and c are equal to 0? Uh, we could have a and c equal to 0. Uh, I mean, we could have, if a and c were equal to 0, then b also would be equal to 0. So, uh, by parity, you know that at least, uh, at max, 1 can be 0. Not all 3 can be 0. So, this, this would never be of the form 0 by 0, if that is what you are uh, concerned about. Other than that, you will always end up with the value 2 for this fraction. In fact, if you can't go about doing this uh, algebraically, uh, take values such that b square is not equal to ca. I mean, b square won't be equal to ca if uh, uh, you take uh, a plus b plus c equal to zero, and then you can uh, get get your answer. Okay. Yeah.
So I didn't got like uh, you said that according to parity, if like a cannot if uh, two numbers are uh, are like the sum is gonna be zero. So ah, if 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 two numbers are zero, then the third number also I will have to be zero, na? No? Uh, because sum of two numbers zero and the third number plus that sum is zero, so they'll all have to be zero. Okay, Only so one heard, number can be. I heard that the another number cannot. Be. Ah, will have to be zero. Okay, x plus one upon x is equal to nine. Find x square plus one upon x square. So this class, this class is very fast paced. Uh, and okay, someone got the answer. Very good. Uh, those who are getting answer already knows all these uh, techniques how to solve. Uh, those who are unable to get the answer, just uh, make a fast note of these uh, concepts and then apply them later on when you're solving. Questions on your own free time. We have to go about doing this. When about five or five minutes or two, three minutes will be left, I'll give a bunch of questions that you can take as homework. So I'm send my answer, but I'm not sure that whether I can simplify it. Ah, that is not the answer that will come out. It will be a number. Fine. So look at this x plus one upon x. If you take a whole square of this, what you'll get is x square plus two times uh, x times one upon x. This is two a b plus b square one upon x square. And this is equal to nine square, which is eighty one. Notice what happens to this term. The rest of it is x square plus one upon x square plus two is equal to eighty one. So you get x square plus one upon x square is equal to seventy nine. Right. Then you have oh, the question solved. Now let's see your x plus one upon x equal to one. Find x cube minus one upon x cube. Let's do this x cube plus one upon x cube. Okay, second part is. X cube minus one upon x Okay, our first one, few people are getting answer for it. Yeah, everyone is getting answer there. So first one is really simple. How to do it? X plus one upon x, the whole cube is equal to what? X cube plus one upon x cube plus three ab, which is x times one upon x a plus b x plus one upon x. Now this already is known equal to one. So we already we have one is equal to uh, x cube plus one upon x cube plus three times of one. So what we are left with is x cube plus one upon x cube 
is equal to minus two. Okay. The second part of this x cube minus one upon x cube. This in uh, this I'll give one more minute to think about. Did someone get the answer? Ah, here we are. We are. Uh, the the aim of this question is not to find x. You will see that x is not real. Once you get a quadratic, you will find the discriminant is greater than not greater than. It's less than zero, and you will have imaginary roots. But uh, th these expressions can be uh, solved. Right. So, how to do this second part? I will factorize this. I'll write x minus 1 upon x. So could you give 1 minute, please? Yeah, fine. Yeah, few of you are getting correct answer. I, 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 again, I'm saying it's going sorrow correct answer. Uh, sorrow correct. Yeah, most of them sent answer for part one. Part two only Soro is sent. No? Yeah, your answer is correct. No, Raghav, answer uh, for part two is wrong. That's it correct. Yeah, once you know that you can factorize it, you will see that uh, you will get some. It was screen share paused. Once again, how, how much did I miss? I don't remember where I left off. Your screen share was never paused. Okay, fine. To me, it's showing that it was paused. You could see my screen, but uh, yes, change it. Fine. It was, uh -huh. fine. And okay, does anyone have a doubt? Uh, from where was it paused? I don't remember. So I have a doubt. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. So like in the end, I got x cube plus 1 by x cube plus 3x plus 1 by x is equal to negative 2. But I didn't know like, so you got like x cube plus 1 upon x cube is equal to negative 2. So huh. I didn't got that to it, like 3x plus 1 by x. So this thing is, this thing is 1, no? Yes, sir. Ah, and then uh, this one will go away that side, so it will become minus 2. Okay, so just a second. So now is my answer correct? Uh, yeah, answer is 0. Answer for second part is 0. This will become 0. This is minus 2. How would I come to 0? I will factorize this. I will get x square plus uh, x times 1 upon x plus 1 upon x square. Okay. Now I already know how to uh, get uh, x square plus 1 upon x square from this. Right. Uh, this will be x square plus 1 plus 1 upon x square. Now, uh, what, what is given to us? This is given to us now. So, from... We have x, uh, what do we have? We have x plus 1 by x equal to 1. So if I take a whole square of this, what I get is x square plus 2 plus 1 upon x square equal to 1. And this, if we cancel 1 from 1 here, I get x square plus 1 plus 1 upon x square. This expression is equal to 0. If this is equal to 0, and this is a factor of this, then this will be 0. So this will be left to equal to 0. Again, uh, how did I know that I had to factorize this and then uh, check that 0? No, my aim was to actually find this and then this also. I mean, not my aim. Your aim should have been to factorize it. And then once you have factored it, it it's really easy to find x uh, minus 1 upon x because uh, 
x plus 1 upon x, the whole square is equal to 1. From here, you can see that x square plus 2 plus 1 upon x square is equal to uh, 1. Uh, if you change this 2 to minus 2, you do a minus 4 over here and minus 4 over here. What you're left with is x square minus 2 plus 1 upon x square equal to minus 3. Again, this, this is coming, this is a perfect square is coming negative, which is all fine uh, over here uh, because the x was never real to begin with. So x minus 1 upon x, the whole square is equal to minus 3. We don't have to deal with these imaginary stuff uh, uh, right now. Uh, because the other factor neatly came to zero. Okay, and other uh, others who are actually aware of what I'm talking about here, uh, this x is the negative of imaginary cube root of uh, unity. And if you know the, the few uh, properties of that, then you can directly see that both of these are equal to each other and they will cancel and give one. This is only for those who already know about complex numbers. Uh, other to this question. This question number 13. Find Okay, we have gone slightly beyond the class time, but Thank you. Going. The learning question is for everyone. Yeah, thirteen. Everyone can do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can solve thirteen for now, and give fourteen uh, rest for the questions at home. Though. Or do one thing, take this also as homework. Uh, X, Y minus. The 13 was 69. 13 was half correct. These are simple questions only. So what do we stand by P? Like? Huh? What do we uh, mean by P? Probability? No, no, this is a function. When these many questions are enough, you can note the them down. P of X is P of X plus three by two. Yeah. So fifteen is five. So 16 will be 2043. No, 16 won't be 2043. So 15 is 5. Ah, 15 is 5, correct. Others who want to leave can leave. Last 16 question. is 2023. So it is 2023. Yeah, very Okay, uh, fine. I'll end the class right now. 
excuse me, sir. I'm parent of Tanay. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask some question. Now, will this seminar be there every Saturday? Uh, as far as I know, uh, the syllabus that was supposed to be taught uh, is almost over. There'll be, I guess, one or two more classes. Uh, and AMC exam is probably in uh, January or February someday, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, I'm uh, not sure how many more classes, but uh, this will be all on alternate Saturdays. Achha, alternate Saturdays. Okay. So the student will be informed. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I wouldn't be the one doing the informing. I, I, I'm the instructor. Uh, oh. But the, the way you got the link for this uh, class, the same manner you'll uh, find it next time also. Okay, okay. Uh, are there any study materials or any of uh, for uh, for this to? Uh, you can search for mastering AMC eight or uh, there. There are books on uh, 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 MAA website also for uh, specifically for uh, AMC competitions. The previous year papers are in it. Uh, I mean, it's a good enough guiding tool for them. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Because I am not sure, but he was finding it a little difficult. So I thought. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, this class is such that there are students of varied ca capabilities, caliber. Uh, so few of them were able to give answer to all questions. Some of uh, the students might have found it difficult. But anyways, you have to uh, try to better yourself. That's sure. Thank you so much. Fine. I'll uh, end the class. Thanks. Thank you.